Good morning. Good morning. How much fun is this? This center rocks, doesn't it? I mean, really. I, I don't know about you, but this morning, this morning, I wasn't very, very centered, you know? I don't know about you guys, but man, getting my mind in order where I want it to be, you know, I, I tell my friend Terry back there that some days it's a feather and some days it's a forklift to get my thoughts up. Today was kind of in between. The minute I start thinking of others, I calm down. The minute I ask, what am I doing today? Well, today I get to speak um, for the highest good of all concerned, to increase that in infinite energy with my energy. And so think of the, the increase of energy in this room with everybody. What an opportunity to make a difference in the world just, just because we're happy, just because we're receiving a message that not only makes sense, that we can take home as a tool and better our lives. You know, Ernest Holmes said, inward, onward, upward. You know, so you receive that energy, and then you embrace that energy, and then you express that energy. It's awesome. It's just awesome. Six months ago, I was in a very dangerous depression, and I made myself come to the, the people Bonnie and the board bring are just amazing. How many people saw Edwin Gaines? Awesome woman, isn't she? So I've been her personal assistant with Terry Cole Whitaker in La Jolla and her personal assistant in Detroit with Marianne Williamson. And I heard that... <laughs> yeah, she's a good friend. Um, I heard that Edwin Gaines was going to be here, and I thought, oh, brother, I know the principle of attraction. I know how to create money. Really? How much money do you have? Oh, about $20. <laughs> but I know how to attract it. And I teach science of mind. And I teach 16, 17, 18. In the Hollywood church, I would just say, what chapters? 16, 17, 18. Successful living, mental equivalence, the law of attraction. Those three chapters can just move me up and make me something worth attracting. You know, I felt I'm not worthy of attracting. I don't want to go see Edwin Gaines because I'm not succeeding. The other places, La Jolla and Detroit, I was succeeding. I was making a lot of money. I uh, was loving myself. I was serving. I like to serve ministers. I like to serve here. My beat is the trenches, spiritual support services. I'm interested in serving people. I'm interested in fanning your inner flame. Um, when I give a class, I, I hope that what I present resonates in a way that you can embody it. You know, Ernest Holmes says we have to embody it. We have to embody it. That's that mental equivalent. We have to embody it in, a, in order to attract it. So you ask yourself, what level of energy am I putting out there that is bringing what? What energy am I bringing in? Um, so today, it's easy to bring high energy, to present high energy thoughts, because of the energy in the room. The energy in the room is awesome. Every Sunday, in every class, it is awesome. And you can take that increased energy and embody it. And then you express it on a high level, and your life turns around. So I let Edwin Gaines, you know, before I was a personal assistant and I was really high up with Terry and, and Marianne and I was all that and I was taking care of the guest speaker and posing. I did a lot of posing. <laughs> so uh, after all, I was, better, I was a better dresser than both of them. <laughs> Marianne, she'll tell you the truth. Girl, let me, let's go shopping. <laughs> anyway, first snort. <laughs> so I came to the workshop, and I greeted her, and she remembered me, which is always a puff up. And um, she said the same old thing. She started with the same old story, but it was new because it was in the moment. You know, I can remember it with all that baggage attached to it, 
or I can let it be. I can open up and receive what she's teaching and how her energy is here and now. So, you know, she always says 70 times 7. You write that down 70 times a day for seven days. And what helped me was she goes, so do 35 in the morning and 35 in the evening. And I did it. I have this beautiful notebook with all this. My affirmation, she said, make an affirmation that will clear you up and pave the way for spirit to come and have fun with you. And so it was, I am forgiven and free to prosper now. I am forgiven and free to prosper now. Let's say that. I am forgiven and free to prosper now. So this morning, we can actually set ourselves free. Because the guck that stops our lives from producing what we want is just impacted thought. And Ernest Holmes says treatment um, dissolves negative thinking. We can dissolve it right now. We don't, I mean, I go for help and I tell my story and I make amends and all that stuff. Or I can just breathe and say, it's gone, I'm done. Come on, God, let's have fun. Oh, that was good. Um, <laughs> yep, I'm expressive. So today's about money. We love money. You know, when Terry used to say, I just love money, I thought, that is sick. <laughs> you know, you're not supposed to love money, especially if you're spiritual. You're not supposed to talk about money from the pulpit. By the way, I make amends for the last time I spoke because I descended into politics. And I don't ever watch my YouTube video, but I did. And I just loved it. And I was listening like there was someone else talking. I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I went into politics, and the energy descended. It's against the law to speak politics in church. And I was, Bonnie was perfect because she said, you know, the board president said she was political, which I was. But I thank God that I criticized myself first. <laughs> I don't want to be ambushed with something that I did wrong. You know, I want to have a cushion. So, and Bonnie, you know the way she communicates things. You know, she's just awesome. So money. It's good to have a symbol of money. It's good to have um, a bracelet, a stone in your pocket, something that reminds you every time you look at this. Like, this is my mother's bracelet. And she loved money, and we were wealthy until we weren't. But this is when she was wealthy. And I think, I am wealthy, and I love money, and I love the stuff she bought and did. I used to make it wrong. You know, oh, my God, we were so superficial. So what? We had a blast, you know? I taught money. I brought myself from the laundromat to the pulpit in La Jolla to Malibu and all the trappings of Rodeo Drive and all that. I went from the laundromat to that with my thoughts. So today, you can think, okay, this is what I want. You know, you turn from the problem to the solution. I'm ready to receive a lot of money now. I'm ready to receive a lot of money now. Let's say that. I'm ready to receive a lot of money now. Okay? So I wasn't loving where I was living recently. And I wasn't satisfied with my money. I thought, what is wrong with you? Well, would you read 16, 17, and 18, you nut? That's all I had to do, and I rose up. And then I thought, I'm not going to get into a better living circumstances until I love it just the way it is. I went to, over I went to a 12-step program because I, was, I didn't like the number on the scale. And it was great for me because it isn't about diet. They don't weigh you. Um, it's, it's none of their business how I do my program. And how I did it, I said, I'm going to stay awake when I eat. I'm going to stay conscious when I eat. Food is fuel. It isn't uh, gauze for emotions. You know, sometimes I say, let's go stuff our emotions, have a big old breakfast. And, you know, I still do it once in a while. Did it yesterday. And I let myself eat whatever I want, use a lot of syrup, all that stuff. And, of course, the scale is going to read, you know, a pound or two heavier. I go, well, cause and effect. You ate that stuff, you're paying the price. And now I know how to think about food. I don't like, um, you know, a friend of mine says, 
I don't eat white death. Well, that's <laughs> sugar and flour, you know. Sugar is so natural. Have you ever seen it growing? It's so gorgeous. It's from the earth. And wheat, you know, the, the golden waves of grain, what is it? America the beautiful, the golden amber waves of grain. That's what I said. <laughs> I know if you're gluten-free, it's not good for you. <laughs> I have starved myself. I've done everything. I've been a vegan. Um, I'm almost a vegan. Um, I love Ralph. How many people like Ralph Waldo Emerson? He said, why would you eat a corpse? Your body is not a cemetery. <laughs> Sorry, don't stay with that thought. That's just one thought that I can, I can be conscious of. You know, what is this food? Where did it come from? Is it dyed? Is it, you know, like, um, you know, meat is ugly without red dye. It's <laughs> anyway, off that. I hope that wasn't political. This is, <laughs> this is from Peggy Shin, who's going to speak here once a month. How many people know Peggy Shin? She is the bomb. She embodies the truth. She got herself to Mexico. She lives, whoops, she lives there. Thank you, girls, that reminded me, don't walk away from the microphone. They actually want to hear me. <laughs> it's not what I say this morning. It's not about me, even though I really want you to notice this. <laughs> you know what this is? It's covering pelt and protein. And you better give thanks, my pelt is covered. <laughs> But that's what it is. We dress the pelt and the protein. We do. That's what we do. If you're, if you're dressing, just say, okay, I'm covering my pelt in a way that I just love. And I hope they uh, notice the clothing and not the shape it's draping. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the colors. <laughs> okay, so it's all about presentation, isn't it? You know, Bonnie and I were talking about our different styles. And I love Bonnie's style. I love it. How many people love Bonnie's style? Everyone's holding their hand up. Ha, ha. <laughs> Let it in. Um, because I love her colors. You know, it's usually sage. I love how she speaks. She's like a river. You know, she's in tune with the river of life. And she floats on it, and she tells it. She interprets the river of life in such a way that it will maybe make sense to you and you can apply it to your life and lift up to higher vibrations. That's what she wants to do, and she does it. You know, I love the prayer she does after I talk because I wander all over the place, and she just goes, this is what she said. <laughs> <laughs> so we have different styles, and we're supposed to. Comparison kills the aliveness. Comparison and competition. Of course we do it. I wouldn't dress this way if I didn't want you to... Love it. You know what I mean? So um, it's not about clothes, but I always say it because um, I try not to pay too much attention to the drapery. I really do. And I want you to look at this and not my wrinkled face. So it's all about ego. My ego chose the colors. All that. I mean, did you see my shoes? And it's a big so what, isn't it? Do you care what I'm wearing? You know who my, her my heroine is? One of them is um, Kathleen Wolf, because she's so natural. If you know her, she's natural. She is herself. She doesn't hide her pelt. She doesn't spackle her face. Spackle, you know, those older girls in here, we spackle our face, hoping it'll drip into the cracks and cover it up. So she doesn't spackle her face. She wears, wears very simple clothing. She wears sandals, and she's herself. And the women that work in this office and the volunteers here are the people backstage, and they are why we're here. They make this possible. So with all the office people, what are you called now? Office engineers? Or <laughs> I know it's not secretary. I know that. So um, how about energy assistants? representatives of God. Would all the people that work in the office, paid and unpaid, stand up, please? I mean you, and I mean you. Come on. Up, 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 up. It's awesome. These women are awesome. With Kathleen, I sink down into truth. With Catherine, I, 
I explode with laughing. I just explode. And, those, and each one is so important to me. What I'm saying is it's self as Kathleen. It's self as Catherine. I got you guys right. So um, it's self as Roger, you know, self as the musicians. The musicians have a thought of music. They practice it, and they present it. It comes from the idea. I think we'll sing this, and it's always perfect. Joy to the world. The bullfrog is one of my favorite songs because I love animals. It's always perfect from them. So money, it's good to have a symbol of money. This is Lakshmi. She is the demigod of prosperity. She usually has golden coins all over herself. The vision for me, you know, Terry taught us to have a cartoon image of money coming to and through you. And uh, one of the ministers had a crystal train, crystal cars full of money, just coming, 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 stopping at her depot and keep going. That's a good one. I used to have, you know those wind machines where everyone grabs money? I used to have one that was just packed, just packed. Now I have the bank because that's where my money is. And I think, how do you like going to the ATM at the end of the month? It's like, <laughs> for me, sometimes I contract. I used to contract at the ATM. Now it's like, wow, this is like winning the lottery. The money's just pouring through. And I see money as nothing coming into golden energy, coming to the bank for a little while to keep it safe. And then I go to the drive-up window or the ATM, and I receive what I push the buttons for. So see yourself pushing those buttons when they say, what do you want for an amount? Unlimited. <laughs> what do you want for your amount? Well, I want this, I need this, and I want a little extra. And in, the, and in stores, do you want more cash? Yeah. <laughs> of course I want more cash. You know, just read everything as abundance. This is the um, woman that rep I'm going to pass this around. This is a, an image of abundance, Lakshmi, abundance. So um, Ernest Holmes is one of the best tellers of truth. In fact, the best. And I've studied, I've studied every night and every morning since 1978. You'd think I'd be on a mountain. <laughs> You, so I'm not, I have my feet on the ground, my heart in love, and my mind on God. So um, that's what works for me. And there's this story. I wanted to bring this book. It was really important. Like Jim Rogers asked me to send pictures of it because it's not published. It's called Seminars. And it's pale green, and there's no publishing information. You know how you open a page, and it's like a whole page of, this is the book, how it came about, this is who did it, blah, blah, blah. Nothing in this seminar lectures. So um, it's his lectures from a retreat in the High Sierras. And what it is is his talks. So there's a liveness in it. You know, they recorded it in the moment, and it gets on the page. In this thing called you and, and the um, textbook, when it's in italics, that's when he was in the zone. So you can just focus on the italics. You know, he, he was, he channeled. I don't know if you like the word channel. I did, then I didn't. Now I'm okay with it. Um, he was a tube, <laughs> and his tube was clear. You know, we're tubes. We're pelt tubes. <laughs> and we are the creation of nothing. And when it comes through our, our thoughts, it becomes something. So my workshop, I mean, my three-week class is called my, Mind Your Matters, not your manners. Screw that. Mind Your Matters. Mind Your Matters. And the picture, you probably can't see it, but it's a male and female bird, and they have a thin chain. The details are awesome. Catherine found this for me. Um, and on that chain is a cage, and the door is open. So you mind your matters, because if something matters, it matters too much. So, and then you get matter and matter. So it's all about mind your matters. You know, mind, mind, what's, mind your home. I clean my home better now. I love my home. Guess what? 
Last Sunday, I was walking through the hood. I love the hood, Mesquite. And I was walking through with my dogs, and this man was watering in front of my dream home. I don't know if you've seen it. It goes um, Nueva Casita, Bex, and this dream home. And the park that I'm in every day. So I look at those three buildings every day. I love eating at Nueva. I love drinking coffee at Bex. And you can order from Nueva Casita, and they bring it to you at Bex. You know, that's my hood. And the people are playing in, in the park, parents to toddlers. So there was a man watering outside my dream home. And he was on the sidewalk, so I wasn't intruding. I mean, after all, you're game if you're on the sidewalk. <laughs> and so he was watering my dream home over the fence. And I said, oh, thank you for keeping this home up. It's my dream home. I just love it. And he said, well, I'm going to eventually sell it. And I went, you know, with no way, to, no way to buy it whatsoever, none. But it's mine. It's absolutely mine. And he said, well, it's a big property. Um, there's a little house in the back. And so I said, can I see it? And it's perfect. It's a little stone house. And I think that it's mine. Now, with Terry Cole Whitaker, I would say the stones are mine, the door is mine, you know, everything. Like, if you were buying a car, the upholstery is red, the car is the Cadillac, and she got it. She just visualized it. And so I drew it. You know, vision boards work? You know those treasure map vision boards? My first one was uh, with Terry. I was directing prayer ministry, and <laughs> I put, maybe I told you this, but you're going to hear it again. I put this collage up about Mexico and everything I love about and everywhere I was going. And I would look at it during the day and went, that's for me, that's for me, that's for me. That I didn't go, but the woman next to me did. <laughs> you get it? I didn't have the receiver. We have to have a mental avenue. We have to light the runway or the plane doesn't land. We have to say, this is it, come on down. And I don't, um, like I said, I love my house. I love my house just the way it is, the house I'm in. And then I said, I love my bank account. I love my bank account. It's full and overflowing all the time. It's just a, a temporary rest stop. And it comes from nothing to the something to me. And then I get to do what I want with it. So I did, um, I, drew, I drew the house. And then I drew Nueva Casita, Bex. And it says, Mi Casita. And I did, I'm going to do with it, I had a lot of notes for today. A lot of notes, Bonnie, a lot of notes. And um, so it has, it has the house. It's on Mesquite, which is the El Camino Real from Mexico to Santa Fe or beyond. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So I'm on, I, I'm just saying it. I'm on the, the El Camino Real. And I don't outline. You know, I don't say, this is my house. I say, this is so exciting. I know the feeling of my next house. It's just wonderful. I love being there. I love having people over. My dogs are happy. It's the greatest house. And Ernest Holmes says, you visualize it, and then you accept it. You provide the metal avenue, and then you pass it on to spirit. It's like, okay, this is what I want. Really? There's something so much better, but you're focusing on this. You know what I mean? This or better. I just pass it on to spirit, you know? And now I have this, this mental avenue, this mental equivalent for how I want to feel in the house. I buy cars by how I feel. I bought my BMW because it has a lever and it, it lifts up so I didn't feel short. That's what I bought it for. I don't care. I did care because it was a status symbol. <clears throat> but really, I tried on all kinds. I try on cars. And when I feel tall, that's probably the one. OK, so that's how it works. That's how it works. So I have little drawings. And I'll put them on the floor if you want to take pictures. Jim took pictures in our class on the Bhagavad Gita. OK, so this is a, a diagram. You know, the metaphysical chart is our teaching logo and it's spirit, mind, and body. The V is unlimited. It's curved. It comes in through your consciousness, your idea. It goes through the factory, 
and down to the product. So if the factory is a mess, if people walk out, if it's rusty, if the doors are locked, what happens? You're not going to get silverware. It, it depends on the, it's how and where and who is making that. And so we don't need how, where, who. We need faith in what we cannot see. The most important thing in life, you can't see it, you can't touch it, you can't feel it. If you can sense it through the five senses, you're dead. You're not dead. It means it's temporary, doesn't it? If you can, if you can perceive it through your senses, if you put your hand on your face, that's all five senses right there. This is how you experience life. And what, and what, what uh, the entryway, the tube, is how these senses will produce. So if you want to be abundant, you can say, I see abundance everywhere. I see it everywhere, like the ATM, more cash? Yes. Yes, unlimited. I see abundance everywhere. I see the abundance in your eyes. That's where it starts. It starts with your thoughts, and your thoughts shine through your eyes, don't they? They really do. They shine through their eyes. So I see abundance everywhere. I, I lift up with incense. I lift up with aroma. I lift up with night-blooming jasmine. I lift up, and I receive abundance on this lifted energy, whatever you like to sniff. You know, make sure you sniff something that brings you high. You know, they, the Hindus say that you light the incense with the flame, you place it in the holder, you, uh, you, you light it, and the, the, the uh, smoke, what is that called? The, the stuff that comes out, your thought takes your thoughts up. And you don't have to have incense. You just say, I'm going to breathe with the spirit. You know, breath is the closest thing to spirit, you know. Spirit means breath, spiritu, Latin, spirit, breath. You cannot do without breath. You can do without almost anything for days. People have. But you can't do without breath, and breath is spirit, and you can't see it or touch it or contain it or form it or franchise it. It is just breath. And you, the breath specializes in your organs. Breath as the heart, breath as the liver, breath, breath as... Anything in the pelt. Okay, so <clears throat> I say, what's in your tube? You know when they say, what's in your wallet? I'm saying, what's in your tube? So we get an idea, and it has to move through thought. And this is where we are, clear as a bell. We don't even have to, the, all we have to have is the idea and clear the thought, the middle band, and spirit shoots through to what we want. And I leave the details to God, but it's a goal, a thing, being, person, money. You know, I just want to feel abundant. And the I mean, money came through the mail. Someone left me money in a card the last time I was here. That, didn't, that wasn't happening six months ago. I was contracted around money. I was contracted around my life. I kept seeing what was wrong with my house. It's a crumbling old adobe. And it has lots of charm, but I'm over it, you know? <laughs> So it's time to up, up, scale, up. Anyway, <clears throat> thought without energy is dead. We have to breathe into those thoughts. We have to give those thoughts life and vibrancy. It doesn't mean you have to bounce around and wear loud colors. It means you can stand still like Bonnie. It means you can sit in this room in the fabulous meditations with Bob. Stand up, Bob. This is our practitioner. Turn around. Yay! You have no idea what you have to, the rings you have to jump through to be a practitioner and teaching practitioner class. You know, Albert Camus said, hell is other people. <laughs> so when I, I was speaking to hundreds of people, and then I, I was getting burned out, burned out, my energy was going down. And so I started a class and had a great assistant teacher. And it was small, and their energy was low. So I said, you attracted this class. <laughs> I didn't. But it matched. It matched my energy. Okay, so what's in here? Mother, father, hate, resentment, judgment, criticism. So if that's in here, 
it's going to go, uh, 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 and it's going to come out as what you judged. There's a story in that uh, seminar lectures of Ernest Holmes. He always, he always picked up hitchhikers, you know? He would wait for people to come in, the law of attraction. He wouldn't get out there and say, come in, come in, give me your money. Money in attendance, money in attendance. No. He just told his truth with joy. He was always like, isn't this wonderful? He was just so excited. So he picked up this hitchhiker that had no money. He was dirty. And he said, I'm hungry, aren't you? So they go to a restaurant, and the waitress comes up. And Ernest Holmes says, isn't she sweet and lovely? And the guy goes, she thinks she's better than I am. And he said, well, isn't that interesting? He said, uh, don't you want to be happy? He said, you're weird. You know, because Ernest Holmes said, you can be happy. You can live the life you want. And he just says, you're weird. Because he was impacted. He was the composite of the past and the fear of the future. And so he said, well, did you like your mother? She was a jerk. Did you like your father? He never showed up for me. I barely knew him. And he said, that's, what you're pa- that's the corpse you're packing around. He said, do you really want to live your life packing around a corpse? And he said, no. He said, well, until you get rid of the corpse, you can't rise up to joy. It's to get rid of the corpse. So if we have corpses, you know, the past, especially, like when you think of your past, I used to think of my mother as being just vicious monster. She wasn't for 12 years. She was fabulous. We lived in a country club. We did anything we wanted. We had all the, in the 50s, there were status symbols. She had all of them. You know, we were just it. And, um, and she was a fabulous mother. She made our clothes, like really, really good clothes. And <sighs> she designed our house by herself. She wasn't an architect. She just got the architect paper and the little drawings for the toilet. Da, 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 da. She made her own house. She got Sacramento to fund a new school. You know, and if the permits weren't there, she'd drive an hour to Sacramento and bust into the office and get that thing, you know, signed. So um, she was amazing. She just, she trusted her intuition. Okay, so Ernest Holmes says, do you want to be, you're weird. And he says, well, if you drop the corpse, he said, because you're carrying this corpse around and then you're picking more up along the road. You know how you fall in love with either your father or mother? And that's the way it's supposed to be. The characteristics of the one that didn't love you or you thought didn't love you. We are attracted to those people because it's our energy. We're holding all that resentment and ugly experiences in the tube. And we need spiritual Drano. You know, we need to just say, I'm done. I'm done. Let's do that. I'm done. I'm done. I'm happy. Say that. I'm happy. Whether you are or not, if you do this, I'm happy. Or if you wink in the mirror, I swear you'll lift your energy. If I find myself wincing in the mirror, I wink in the mirror. And it's like, oh, I'm okay. It's just, hi, cutie. <laughs> it took a while. <clears throat> so he said, you have to drop the corpse. He says, what kind of minister are you? And he said, well, you know, I studied the world religions, and I just didn't like any of them. And so I made my my own up. That's the ticket. He made it up. He didn't care what didn't care. He didn't have to obey the Bible. He didn't have to uh, go into being slain in the spirit. He didn't have to see visions. He didn't have to do any of that. He said, "How do I want? How do I want a religion? It wasn't a religion in the beginning. It was an institute." How do I want this institute? How can I teach the beauty and the lush and the richment of the source of religions? How can I I embody the beauty that it holds? I plopped my my Bible open, and it went to Psalm 330, and it said, uh, God must increase, I must decrease. And that's it, because we think, we're our ego. We think we're our babbling brook. Don't you have a babble, 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 babble. And it can block the joy. It can block spirit because it babbles about the past and it babbles about the future. Sometimes I say we're stretched out between the pain of the past and the fear of the future, and you aren't going anywhere. Pain of the past, fear of the future. 
And then the now, you know, it's now. The power of now, Eckhart Tolle. And so he said to this guy, I made my own, my own up, and the guy transformed his life. Ernest Holmes would sit on the steps on 6th Street in Vermont in the beautiful first building, gorgeous. He would sit on the steps, and he, a person would walk by and says, Come on in, I'll make you a minister. It drove the teachers nuts. He says, Here, make him a minister. <laughs> but they did, or they didn't, but they didn't forget him. There was a tree that wouldn't bear fruit, and he just talked to her. He said, You are so pretty. I just feel the life going through you. And I know that you can do what you were born to do. I know you can blossom into peaches. I know that. And it did. So that's that knowing the truth. We know the truth. The other thing is do it for God. Do it for God. Do it for God. Come to church to increase the energy. Take the message and apply it. Like Edwin Gaines, 70 times 7. Loving my house. Loving my money. Loving it. I love my money. I love my bank. It's always full. I love this house. I love the creaky boards, the crumbling floors. I just love it. <laughs> and Terry came over. She, when she met me, I just rented it too fast. And I had wanted to leave town, my idea, and go camping for a year. My car, on the day I was leaving, I packed up my car. And I packed up my animals, and I was on my way. I was a free spirit. It broke down on Esperanza, <laughs> which means hope. <laughs> and I lost all hope, and I got depressed. And I had to stay with friends. And it was pretty humiliating and embarrassing, but it was where I was. And then when I started enjoying being with my friend Nancy and enjoying being at this urban ranch with my friend, uh, what's her name, Barbara, when I just started enjoying it, I was lifted. You know, I was lifted to the barrio, which is my place of joy. So if you're not living where you think is joyful, just call it joyful. Just call it joy to the world, joy to you and me, joy to the deep blue sea. Okay, so then for money, you might want to see something like this. This is yellow. You can barely see it. That's spirit. This is thought. And this is money. It has to go through your thoughts. That middle band where we can be packed with, uh, oh, I can't do it again. Why should I get rich? I just end it. I have moved 27 times. My shelf life was 5.8 years. I've been here 15 years because I splattered in the mirror and I faced myself. And I got a new identity. I gave up everything. Everything. And I rose from the essence of who I am through the pelt and the protein. And I like myself today. Last chart is, you know, there are metaphysical charts in the textbook. They're awesome. OK, so I say, I want money. I'm ready for money. But money is this big for me in my thoughts. I want money, but I don't think it's coming. I sat in bed one night and said, I'm ready for more money. I love money. Next day in the mailbox was a card with $135. That's how it works. That's how it works. Seeing the man on the sidewalk, hearing that it's going to be um, available next month, talking to the people in the front house and loving them. That's how it works, the ease. Ernie says, stay where you are until you're lifted effortlessly. Here I am. I'm, I'm going to love it. And I'm going to be ready and expectant and joyful. And then it comes. It really does effortless. So you say, I want money. I want lots of money. Like, oh, but, uh, but. Well, I was poor all my life. How can I pop through and be wealthy? And so then it goes, all this money shrinks down into your thought of money, and it comes out with this shrunken, shrunken thought of money. Then you can do, where's the, oh, this one is abundance, unlimited abundance. Big money, big money, big money. Thought, thought, idea, thought, money, seed, soil, plant. You want to have an open space here. And that's what the V means. Spirit comes down to body and up and out again. And then out, da 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 da, -da like that. Make sense? OK, last thing is, I'm glad I didn't bring my pile of notes. It's time to close. but. Um, 
Last thing is, uh, Stillness Speaks is the modern version of the Science of Mind textbook because Eckhart Tolle also studied all religions. And you can, you can see which one if you studied religions. He doesn't use the word God. He uh, emphasizes, emphasizes your identity, your spiritual identity. He said radical spirituality is accepting what happens in the now. I, okay, this is the way it is. It's no other way than the way it is. What are my options? What are my choices? When you think or speak about yourself, when you say I, what you really refer to is me and my story. This is the I of your likes and dislikes, fears and desires, the I that is never satisfied for long. It is a mind-made sense of who you are, conditioned by the past and seeking to find its fulfillment in the future. If you like that, get a book. I, I recommended it, and you love it, and you're applying it, and your life can change. Textbook, read 17, 16, 17, and 18. My workshop starts on the last Tuesday of the month. It's called Mind Your Matters, because if something is the matter, then matter matters too much. So um, it's all about noticing the thoughts that bring the matter into your life and making sure that what the matter in your life is joyful and wonderful and cool. How's that sound? Sounds great. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. My senses sense abundance everywhere. My senses sense abundance everywhere. Okay, now when we circle up and hold hands, you're holding the hand of God. You're feeling the energy of spirit. And I encourage you to say, like I was taught, my self, my, myself as Bonnie, self as Pat, self as Bob, self as um, Edie. Okay? So I am, I, am, I am energy. I am energy in my pelt. Let's say that. I am energy in my pelt. And why not, why not decorate your pelt? What the hell? Thank you.